called the Pearl of the Balkans, the UNESCO World Heritage City of Ohrid is more than 5,000 years old. In this edition of Macedonian Life, we take the lid off this archaeological treasure chest. Ohrid, a mystical city on the shores of one of the deepest and oldest lakes in the world. Ohrid is one of the oldest human settlements in Europe. The first inhabitants called it Lichnidos, meaning City of Lights. It boasts a rich history and was once an important trading center on one of the most famous ancient routes. Via Ignatia was one of the main roads uh, in the uh, Roman Empire. In, it connected uh, Rome with uh, Constantinople. It influenced in that way that uh, many people uh, passed uh, through this way, a lot of uh, trading, a lot of uh, culture. Many of the city's archaeological gems are still waiting to be uncovered. In the city centre, art historians, architects and archaeologists work together to bring these hidden treasures to light. Bojan Taneski and his team have found something astonishing. A Roman bath dating back to the end of the first century BC. It belonged to a rich family, and as a find, it turned out to be a sensation. We discovered um, a Roman building. Uh, this is actually a small part of that Roman building, uh, the bath, with the beautiful mosaic made from uh, black and white stones. I work here when this was discovered. It was a great excitement because um, this is the only, only kind of mosaic in Macedonia. Over the centuries, the city became a center for Byzantine culture and Christianity. It was home to famous scholars, including St. Naum and also St. Clement, who worked there for three decades and is still venerated by the people here. He is the patron, he is protector and saint and savior of this city. Actually, in his arm, he is holding the city of Ohrid and also the, his university. The first Slavic university was founded by St. Clement 1,100 years ago, and he's also believed to have invented the modern Cyrillic alphabet. In that university was educated the best professors, the best bishops and archbishops. So they spread the Slavic literacy, culture, singing, art everywhere on Balkan and even in Europe. According to legend, 365 churches and monasteries were built in and around Ohrid, one for every day of the year. The city is often called the Jerusalem of the Balkans. Even today, many of these ancient jewels are still dotted around the lake, one of which is the thousand-year-old church St. Sophia. That was the main church where all the major feast events uh, in Orthodox Christianity was uh, done here. Well, when, when I enter this church, I feel uh, the smell of the centuries. The spectacular Byzantine-style wall paintings date back to the 11th century. Special techniques were used for applying these colors. Today, restoration workers are bringing these damaged frescoes back to life using watercolors and a steady hand. It's known that in this period, the artists were using thick layers of plaster, so they had more time to paint on the wet plaster because they had to be finished before it dried. It's a great feeling to finish a painting because we've saved another masterpiece for the generations to come. Leaving this crystal clear lake behind, we now head to the countryside and its breathtaking scenery. Next time in Macedonian life, we'll visit the Matka Canyon. We'll also travel to the Doiran Lake, where we'll explore the traditional lifestyle of the fishermen there.